Hello there and welcome to the Expat Answer Man podcast. If you have questions about being an expat, we have answers. Have you been thinking about moving to the Philippines? If so, I have a full selection of books that give you all the material you need to know about how to move to the Philippines. Everything from the visa process to how you can make money in the Philippines. I've got it all covered. In fact, I have all of the top questions that I get asked covered with an ebook that explains in detail how you can make the move and be successful at it. I've been living here now for almost 15 years and I've learned the ropes and with that knowledge I feel I can help you a great deal in your move to the Philippines. Visit my bookstore, Expat Island Bookstore. It's at expatisland.com expatisland.com all of our books can be downloaded immediately after payment. There's no fuss, no muss, no hassle. See you at expatisland.com. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this week's edition of the Expat Answer Man podcast. It's always nice to have you join me here. Thanks for coming. You know, I've got a lot of exciting things coming, a few changes that are going to be on this podcast. and. I want you to keep coming back over the next few weeks and months. Uh, you're going to see a lot of new things. One thing I'm uh, working on right now is I'm going to have some other expats, other people who live here in the Philippines, some people you know uh, from this site and other sites, and some people you probably don't know yet. They're going to be joining me, and we're going to have like one-on-one -on -one chats together where you can listen in and see what our thoughts are about different topics. I'm looking forward to that, and I've got some really good people lined up already, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be having more people that will join also. Uh, let's see what else I've got. Uh, you know, I've got a big announcement today, brand new. You've never heard about this before. I'm going to be having a radio show now. Uh, my good friend Gary Unger, who's also an American expat living here in Davao City, uh, is the owner of a number of radio stations in the United States and also has a radio station here in Davao City. His radio station here is DXIN. That's uh, DXIN, N as in November. And you can even listen in on his station uh, there on the web. It's DXIN.ph. DXIN.ph. I want to thank Gary for uh, giving me some airtime and Many of my Expat Answer Man uh, podcast episodes are going to be played right there on DXIN. So thank you, Gary, and I'm looking forward to working with you on that. Like I say, everybody, keep uh, your eyes peeled here on the Expat Answer Man. There's going to be more new things coming, and uh, I'm excited about it. So let's get on with today's show. Good evening. What is the consequences if you can pay the penalty of overstaying here in the Philippines? Like um, Chinese, pure Chinese. Hi, Chris. Thank you for calling in with your question about overstaying and what the penalties are. I appreciate the call and I'm happy to answer your questions best I can. To be honest, you did not really give me a lot of information, nothing like how long the overstay has been or anything like that. So it's kind of hard to give a real good answer, but I'll do the best that I can for you. You know, basically, if the penalties are high and you cannot pay, there could be different circumstances depending on how long you've overstayed. Uh, I'd say it's a good chance that you've overstayed for quite a while uh, if you're saying that you can't afford the penalties. If you've overstayed for a long time, there's a good chance that you're going to spend some time in jail for that. Uh, even if you can end up paying the penalties, uh, it's really a good chance that you're going to spend some time in the immigration jail. Uh, the thing is, you know, if you spend time in jail, you're going to get deported after you get out. And what happens on getting deported depends if you can afford to pay by that time, you'll probably be deported and you may not have to be blacklisted. Uh, if you're blacklisted, that means you cannot come back to the Philippines either forever or for some prescribed uh, period of time. 
They might say for three years you can't come back or something like that, and then you'll be removed from the blacklist after three years. It just depends on whether you're able to pay that penalty or not. When you get out of jail in the future and you're deported, if you still cannot pay the penalty, you're probably going to be blacklisted for life. Maybe, say, five years down the road, you can go back and pay that penalty. You can probably appeal and, and be able to re-enter the Philippines at a future date then. Okay, so that's pretty much all I can say based on the information that you gave me, Chris. Anyway, I hope it works out for you, and uh, I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you very much. Do you have someone special in the Philippines? Somebody that you'd like to send a gift to? Maybe some flowers, a teddy bear, or some chocolates? We have a wide variety of gifts available at wowphilippines.com. That's w-o-w-philippines.com. We've been in business for the last 12 years now. We offer world-class customer service. Why not stop by and give us a visit? www.wowphilippines.com. That's www.philippines.com. Hope to see you soon. Okay, I have, I, my problem is my wife in April 2015, or 2016, uh, no, in 2015, started the process for my permanent residence. In October 2016, she passed away while I was still on probation, so I needed to downgrade. Uh, since then, I've downgraded. Now, I wanted to extend for a six-month six month extension, and they told me it is not allowed um, since I was downgraded back to tourist. Um, I can't find anything um, about it online. I was hoping maybe you could help me and explain to me why I can only get two months, then two months, then two months. I cannot get a six-month extension. Um, they are in. They are processing the papers right now. I will be going back to Cebu this in a in a few days. Um, to pick up my ACR card, um, but I would like to extend for six months. Um, I will wait for your message. Hello there, Henry. How are you doing today? I want to thank you for calling in and leaving a voicemail for me. And let me just say, anybody else who's listening, if you have questions, uh, just call my voicemail line, look down at the blue bar at the bottom of my page, and uh, you can click on that, you can leave a voicemail for me, and I'll be happy to answer you either directly or here on the podcast. Okay, Henry, you know, I'm really sorry to hear about your wife's death. That's really a tough situation, and uh, especially if you've got a 13A visa, or if you're in the middle of applying for a 13A visa like you were, it makes the situation even more difficult. Although this part doesn't apply to you, Henry, let me just say for our other listeners that if you have a 13A visa and your spouse dies, there's a good chance that you're going to lose your visa. In the past two to three years, uh, the Bureau of Immigration has been checking more closely on that. And if they find that you are no longer living with your wife, if you and your wife are separated or whatever, and of course death would be part of that, they can take away your 13A visa and most likely they will do it. Uh, you can convert over to a tourist visa just like what Henry says he did, uh, and there's other options too, but um, the other thing is if you, let's say you remarry or something like that, you can go for another 13A. But anyway, let's get back to uh, Henry's question on this. So, Henry, again, like our last caller, you didn't really give me all the details that would allow me to answer your question. One thing you didn't tell me is how long you had already been staying on this particular arrival in the Philippines. You went and you wanted to get a six-month extension to the tourist visa that you downgraded to. Now, if you've already been staying on your previous entry, 
for more than two and a half years, I can understand why they would not be able to give you a six-month renewal because the time that you were under your 13A or in the application process for the 13A, that time will still count against the time for the tourist visa once you convert. So let's say you've been here for two years and seven months. Well, you can only stay for three years on a tourist visa with all the extensions. So there, you don't have six months left in that case. You only have five months left. So there's no way that they're going to give you a renewal that's six months long. And so I can understand that. Now, the other thing is um, there are some Bureau of Immigration offices that don't do six-month renewals. You didn't tell me where you're located, so I can't say for sure. But when they first rolled out the six-month renewals, it was in Manila only at the uh, main immigration office there where you could get a six-month renewal. Then they rolled it out to uh, Cebu and Davao. Uh, I know they've rolled it out to other places since then. I know, I believe Cagayan de Oro has that six-month renewal now, and some of the other larger offices. But it's my understanding that many of the smaller offices still cannot do a six-month renewal. They can only do the old two-month renewal, or for your first renewal, it would only be for 29 days. So there's a number of reasons why they may have said that they won't give you the six-month and you didn't give me enough information to know for sure. The other uh, thing to say is, you know, they could just be wrong. Maybe they're supposed to give you the six month. Maybe they just uh, misspoke or maybe they just didn't feel like doing it. These things happen in the Philippines and it seems like every immigration office you go to, they've got a little bit different story or maybe if you talk to uh, Carlos at Window One, Maybe, you know, John at Window 3 might have had a different answer. You just never know. The best thing you can do is ask around, maybe ask to speak to the head of the particular office that you're at. I don't know about where you are, but here in Davao City, they're actually very good about letting you talk to the, the person who operates the office, the head guy there. You can go back to his office and talk to him. I don't know for sure if your immigration office is like that or not, but always seek a second opinion and um, all I can say other than that is I wish you the best of luck and I hope that everything works out for you worst case scenario take a quick trip to Hong Kong or Singapore come back again get a new 30-day entry and you'll be good to go for three more years then good luck to you Henry I hope everything works out